This is the Cabo GT Pro I reviewed two years ago. And at that time, a monster scooter with areas that needed improvement heading head to head with NAMI Burn E, but giving up an acceleration, power delivery, and top speed. Today, we are looking at the upgraded 2024 GTR, a Frankenstein of electric scooters that will pass in acceleration, top speed, and power delivery than NAMI. This new upgraded model it's even more crazier than the previous GT Pro version. This frame and suspension lift is insane. Looks like those mud lifted trucks, so much travel, it is unreal. Just look at the old model suspension size and height compared to the new one. The difference in width and height, it's crazy. I can't say enough about this. That every scooter company should absolutely go with the front mount controllers. I mean, I know that the Storm, they did it on the back and stuff like that, it's nice but I think the front is where it should be. The specs are crazy. We have a dual 2000 watts hub motors, maximum power delivery of 13,440 watts. The battery is 72 volts, 35 amp hour capacity, 21700 LG cells, and the battery pack is removable. If you look here in the back, look how the shock is angled and lifted like those motocross bikes. It's just so stretched out. And I actually like the suspension in the back. The way it's angled, it has good rebound. It is perfect, almost 100% uh, efficiency and how it works is just so soft, so comfortable. Here, there's a knob, I have to clean it up here. And you can adjust it the way you want it. It's so much travel, so much angle. I like how the rear works. I would say, yeah, 100% this is exactly what I want in a scooter. The front, it's a little stiff for me. It needs to be more soft and I want more adjustability here in the front. So if I turn to the left, about 20 clicks. If I turn to the right, it doesn't stop. I can turn like for one hour. It doesn't click, doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't stop, it's just weird. The same on this left side. So I'm not sure this is the issue. It needs to be addressed. It has adjustability. I just wanted to have more uh, rebound more precise work and to be a little bit softer. 75% efficiency, 75% of the travel that you get in the back, 100%. So if you get the front to work as the back, this will be the best off-road scooter. Even now I think it's the best, but it just has more room to be improved, to be perfect. Going off-road, it's extremely fun. This is the best scooter I've tried so far. Smooth and good travel, responsive rebound. It's still cold and wet. You have to be careful not to lose control going over the soft wet patches. And I cannot go fast here. I only hit 20, 25, 27 miles an hour. But the most amazing part is the sine wave controller. You have crazy fast acceleration, but you can also go slowly, press the trigger very lightly and have even in a sport level. Very smooth start and it is so intuitive and it does need getting used to right away from the first day of riding. So much range on a throttle, it is so comfortable to ride the scooter. What's cool here, you double tap and you get the S and this S is gonna pull more than 100, 110 amps posted on a website. So now it's just insane amount of power. It's almost very similar as the Roaster I tested last week or two weeks ago, but just like under 14,000 watts, under 14 kilowatts. So, you know, if you put this at uh, 84 volts from 72 to 84, if you jump, it's gonna be the same. If not, actually, it's gonna feel probably more because you have so much height and feels like you're taking off like you're flying. So, really crazy performance, insane acceleration. So, let's see what we get now. What's cool in this mode that actually we can go soft or we can do this. I have 
to pause here and explain. The scooter reached 69 miles an hour. I felt a cutout and the power just dropped. It felt like it's limited to 69 miles an hour and dropped to 64 and after it leveled at 66 miles an hour and stayed there. Running out of room, I started to release the trigger and slowly brake. Freaking super stable. This is insanely how stable it is. And it shows 69 for a second, so maybe 65, 64 is the max because I'm like 250 pounds with the backpack and everything on me. But uh, I'm surprised how stable it is. This thing is insane. Wow. And I think if I dock in lower, I can probably pull more. Yeah, this thing is definitely close to 70 miles an hour if you are under 200 pounds, let's say 175, 180, you can definitely squeeze more. And the acceleration is... It's insane. This thing is super rad. <laughs> this is crazy. Just a hair less power than uh, the Roadster, but it's so close, like, it feels similar. If they make this an 84 volt, this is gonna be a very good contender to to go get go against roaster walkie look at that <laughs> nice i want to go and do it again i want to do another speed test this is really stable be careful okay do a test run it's crazy <laughs> let's see when he's coming around the corner that's gonna be cool to see so Michael weighs about 150, 160 pounds with the jacket, with the helmet, so he's pretty light. And I'm expecting really high speed. I reached 69 miles, that's what's registered on the speedometer. And this speedometer is pretty accurate. I tested, you know, with the GPS uh, next to it, the different speed levels. So but if you maintain 20 miles an hour or you maintain 25 or 45, it's almost dead on. Plus minus one mile, which is, I think that's pretty accurate. So let's see if he's coming around. Was it different this time? I was more comfortable this time. More comfortable? Yeah. 69, still the same speed. 69. But I, I'm, you, I mean, you have to... I just need more room. More room? Or if the tunnel's empty all the way towards the end, because it's always towards the end. There's cars. cars and I want my brake in this. You don't have a visor? I, I, my helmet fell the other day and it came off, so... Holy shit, I should've brought my helmet, man. I feel so bad because nice. you need a visor at the speed. I, I like it like that anyway. Oh shit. <laughs> My visor was all foggy already. Was it different with the double tap? Uh, I think I think I accidentally double tapped before. I think I think uh, so it was the same? I think I was already getting those high speeds, but this time I got to feel the the 45 mile an hour limit you was talking about. Uh huh. So I got to double tap it to get the extra speed. So So you got it, right? It's so like yeah, towards the middle of the tunnel I felt the limit kick in and I hit it like you said and it just started picking up from the I like this one. How was the handling? Handling is so right. It's all right. Bench is pretty good though. It feels stable even at high speeds. I feel the wheels still grounded. You know, I don't feel the the wheels bouncing off the ground, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, it depends how you sit on it, but this is a hybrid tire, so this is not like street or off road. that's in between. Yeah, it so needs, it needs um, some stickier rubber. This thing so, so that, that, rubber. So that's what I was talking to a friend of mine. So uh, this is nylon, nylon rubbers. So nylon, they have more strength and they actually don't grip well because it's more like plasticky yeah. but if you get pmt yeah. tires they actually have like natural rubber so you leave it more on the ground if you if you like spin right but they sticky they grab and they really connect and they really have better grip so that's that's the difference between pmts and like the regular tires we ride so if you put pmts will be better definitely be better yeah 
that, it definitely needs stickier tires, man. Because I keep burning rubber at all speeds. Yeah. The front wheel just, just keeps spinning. Just keeps spinning, yeah. I Even at 40, 50 like miles. 30, right? I gun it. Spinning like spinning. That's insane. Yeah, I, I'm scared to go any faster. I, <laughs> I don't so, know. so how fast do you think you went? I don't know. I really don't know. This thing is uh, scary fast. It picks up very quick. Well, you also light. I'm you also light. Really light I'm like yeah. 140 wet. So. <laughs> well, hopefully the camera know. picked up. Let's see the footage, and hopefully I'm gonna we'll check after and see how it looks. Yeah, All right. I got some scary shit there for you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, man. Yeah, no, I love it. When it comes to range, this is the best performance I have seen so far in any electric scooters. Taking in consideration that my weight was around 250 pounds during the test and a single mode on a freezing cold day under 30 degrees in Fahrenheit and 5th level going fast. I covered 30 miles in range and I still had 50% battery left. This is insane. In a dual mode and a 5th speed I got around 37 miles in range and still had about 7% battery left. In the summertime, I can get 75 miles or over in range in a single mode and a fifth speed level. Dual mode in the summertime and a fifth speed level over 50 miles in range, which is insane. So much range from only 35 amp hour battery capacity. If you look closely on this model, the number of upgrades is really big. There's a lot of cool stuff here. And I'll start with the battery. The immovable and you can do so many things when you have this battery outside not just charge it inside the house or outside you can actually get an inverter connect this and use for hiking let's say you know like if you're traveling somewhere i don't know like anywhere anywhere remotely you can take this and use as a big battery bank there's products for that you can just you know have to connect make sure you know what you're doing connect the uh, the right terminals and you can use this battery for so many different purposes. Hopefully, uh, they add the USB C and USB A so you can actually connect directly various electronics. Uh, now, the second thing which really makes a big difference is the suspension. I tried to go in Central Park, it's still wet, I can't go crazy, and uh, it's gonna be like that for next week too because I've rained every single second, third day. But I try a little bit, it throws the dirt everywhere, it's so powerful. It is much higher than the previous version and you have 12 inch wheels so that extra one inch really makes a difference in handling and comfort and here in the front you can see this hybrid 12 inch tires really really good not amazing off-road but gives you enough at speeds you know let's say 25 to 40 miles an hour it will do pretty well now if you want to have more control if you have more aggressive riding you need to get the knobby tires but this is i think a sweet spot if you ride between 25 to 40 miles an hour this gives you a lot of control and it's good for the road and it's good for off-road i personally would uh prefer the the big knobby tires if i go full uh, full if i send it full off-road if you get this scooter if you're looking for you know excitement and if you can you know if you don't justify or let's say i don't want to say you can't afford it because I mean, there's different financial situations, but let's say if you can't get the, the roaster, I'll say like that. This is uh, next, the back's option, and you here easily can swap for 13, 4 inch uh, tires. There's plenty of room here also in the back, and really increase handling and probably increase the top speed if you're looking for that. You can see more energy, but uh, definitely bigger OD will uh, increase the top speed. Suspension, not really a big fan of the front. I think it has to be more uh more travel a little bit more not rebound rebound is good just more more plush more soft uh, better dissipation i think that can be done in the next version but uh, this is so much better than the gt and the uh, handling is surprisingly good so far this kickstand make a big difference i like how it is i think slightly longer and gives better stability for the scooter and when you close it look how nicely it hides inside the frame it doesn't grab your foot anymore when you start see how smooth it is so even if you touch it it doesn't harm you that uh, hook is not there anymore so much better the frame looks to be the same as the previous model exact the same size looks like just elevated much higher more travel in the front and the back really 
really shines off-road from all this travel and uh, yeah for speed it's not really it needs to be lower but you can still do it and it still feels so much fun i like how clean the handlebars are nothing besides the small console here which is great and this doesn't come with scooters and a p-design mount which i like it actually can mount can be mounted on any handlebar really comfortable and you'll never lose your phone and it can also twist different angle which is pretty cool we only have this new uh, console with the trigger throttle which is you know the way it came it's so annoying and so uncomfortable i had to like you know keep here so because the scooter is so high up i, I can't just bend my hand that way so uncomfortable my fingers i really can't like reach that point so i push it down and i have the brake lowered here so i personally prefer the thumb throttles and uh, this trigger has no dead zone but what is cool here is a lot of uh, range and you know if you go gently it doesn't you know shoot it goes smoothly but if you press aggressively like a quarter or maybe 35 percent it just freaking unleashes you know the the crack and the wild animal is just insane this thing is just super wild the cable management on the bottom it's so cool and also going here to the top not sure why they stopped here this can be you know down like that and connected into one string like here and the same here you can connect from here and just go on the top and connect this and it looks so much cleaner but even the way it is it's not bad uh, going down the same you know uh, not zip ties but this like wraps around the controller and uh, here uh, this came loose here and another thing is I'm not sure this rubber thing doesn't really stay in the place it's like it doesn't matter how I put it it just pops out so uh, this can be improved and uh, it's not a big deal but it needs to be better I like here the spring loaded charging port is awesome so something like that to have here or just take it out will be cool except you know you get this dirt here and I don't know if that's gonna mess up the, the lock so this is amazing as the previous uh, model easy to service four screws out take the controller and play with it turning signals on the side and here another thing which I saw that uh, the previous model doesn't have is the the cooling fans it's also on both sides also on this side so it allows the air to go inside the controller and cool it off but not sure why the lights are here so I think the lights should be pushed a little higher or lower you can put here a little bracket like an inch two inches lower and put lights here or higher with this uh, horn the horn is super loud like a motorcycle horn which is great so we can lift this higher so the fins are available i think that would be great um and let me actually show you the horn quickly it's freezing cold today guys i'm not sure why am i riding this scooter now i could have waited a couple days to get warmer um to get out of the park press the brakes and you can see it's super bright today super sunny and so easy to read the screen amazing super loud love this horn now the brakes are hydraulic and this is uh, the standard you know that we have zoom brakes that are marked kaboo i personally if i only use i think that this is not enough if i use on the rear brake it's not enough power to stop this uh, crazy acceleration so you get the micro mt5s that definitely is going to do so much better for piston brakes it's going to freaking control this uh, beast so much better and you'll have here like uh, you know like one finger operation kind of thing so here you have to use two fingers and they're kind of steep so um, I've seen better zoom brakes much higher quality uh, this is like you know kind of like feels like entry level so I don't know like it's it's you know I, I was expecting more not sure why they didn't use four piston brakes at least like Logan or something better quality this zoom brakes are dirt cheap so weak and not enough to stop this powerhouse. Yeah, like I can use both brakes and I can stop on a dime or slide. The wheels grip very well, but I feel like if I use only one, it's not really enough. So, so you need definitely four pistons here. And uh, I just only feel like the angle, if you look, it's too steep. It has, it has to be slightly, maybe three, four degrees inside in. You have plenty of room to go in the back. I just feel like I'm a little bit over the handlebars which is not bad it just makes the speed and makes entire acceleration process feel so much more exciting and so much more aggressive this folding latch it's really cool to have it we don't have this on the previous model 
and it's very useful you can connect it there all right so size length from fender it's about 23 and a half 24 inches width it's about nine inch and a half just the frame and if you get these bars about 11 inches with the footrest here in the back it's about eight inches if you get this extra corner here nine inches and about 13 inches with extension people actually put here various pelican cases various you know bags which is cool i like to have all the space to put my foot in the back really cool about 11 inches if you look at the tire this is 12 inches it's almost the same height when you step on the scooter it doesn't drop down not even half an inch so a lot of space here in between a lot of clearance best option to go off-road handlebar weave tip to tip 29 and a half inches the height from the battery to the stem is 34 inches and to the handlebar it is 41 and a half inches it actually fits in the elevator look at that it's not as long shorter base almost perfect the battery you have this lock combination so you can adjust it you flip it up and the battery comes out and here you have the cable disconnect the cable it comes out and this i have to check the ratings but looks to be well sealed and you have here a display it shows you 100 percent the voltage and what is cool about this connector you can make an adapter and before i get there let me show you here the specs lg cells and it's 72 volts 35 amp power. This is one of the best batteries I've seen so far. You can get an adapter, an inverter, and you can actually connect here and use this for, you know, camping, for trips, for traveling. In your RV, you can power on a lot of electronics, which is awesome. Very clean. You have here rubber to stop it from moving. Really clean design. I like this. And what's cool about the scooter, that um, dirt looks good on it. Don't clean it. It's actually, I like the way it looks with the dirt. Really a massive beast. And uh, remove the battery and you can fold it. And it's so much easier to handle it now. You can lift it and uh, play around and put it away. Yeah, the battery has the sports outside and I like this connectors. I like this uh, rubber mat. It's really grippy, really good. You have this uh, rubber feet all around. This handle makes it easier to lift it and the battery is kind of heavy. If you look here all around, well sealed. It's a solid pack and you have big connectors. You have anti-spark here. Uh, yeah, all around very well done. Cool display added here. This battery can be used for so many things. Different electronics, if you're camping, hunting, you know, traveling. Lights. So you have strobe, low and high beam. Look at this lights. This is so powerful. So this is standard GT, GTR lights that uh, you guys know about and you heard about. So this is pretty cool, powerful. We have the side lights and we have brake lights, red and blue. So when you press, you have this like mixed color, which is pretty cool. And here we have in the back, the brake lights. And let me show you guys the side view. So it looks really cool. Now the side and the rear brake, not super bright, but the front, it is insanely powerful. So when you, let me actually point it out like that so you can see, it just lights up the entire street. This front dual lights are extremely powerful. And we have also the front lights. And let's do the turning signals very quickly. Lights up the side the same as GT Pro and you have the back light and I'll show you guys the brake so you can see both intensity so this is the brake light and the brake light is dimmer than the turning signals which is an improvement that needs to be added here and uh, you can also turn both lights so you can see like the assistant light on both sides pretty cool I like how the the brake lights light up underneath pretty cool and the brake light is really good not so much in the back it's even more intense but if you turn the signal you'll see it it's super bright so this are the lights guys really nice the front light it's really really powerful this new GTR is the second after the Roadster speed-wise and acceleration. 
spot, number one option and unbeatable off-road. I like the new upgrades GTR brings, but still needs a few more little tweaks. For this price, this is a wild beast and you get a lot of performance that justifies the price. The link will be down below in the description box and take advantage of the $200 discount code. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.